Welcome to the Propreneur Podcast, where we help practice owners become better entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Dino Watt. Welcome once again, everybody, to the Propreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Dino Watt, and excited to have a, a very special guest on our show today because I've known Mary for years, and I've uh, was there at the very beginning when she started doing this thing that she's doing, which I'm excited to tell you about. But before we get to that, remember, if you uh, have not subscribed to the podcast, make sure that you do so. And if you haven't shared it with a friend or a colleague, make sure you do so as well, because we always are trying to give you the best practices possible to help you be more proactive, more productive, and more profitable in all areas of your life. And again, today is no exception. Our guest today is Mary Sautel from Mary's List. Mary, welcome. Hi, Dino. Excited to be here. Yeah, I'm so excited to have you. We got to do a little bit of talking beforehand, and it's been a while. It's funny, as soon as I saw you pop up on my calendar as uh, being a guest, number one, I was super excited that they got a hold of you and got you booked. But number two, it flashed me back to, I want to say, was it was it three years ago at, I want to say, MKS, where you were speaking Yes. And we were talking beforehand. You were so nervous about speaking. And you got done. I was like, why was she nervous about speaking? Like, she's so good at this. So it's, I'm sure you've spoken plenty of times since then. But you with Mary's List, please tell us, give us a little introduction to yourself and how this whole Mary's List started. Okay. Well, um, just, I guess I'll start a little bit about my background so uh-huh. you can figure out or understand how I got to here. Um, I started out as a lab tech in the 80s working for an orthodontist. Uh Um, You know, back then there was no internet. You know, you couldn't apply that way. It was like if you were looking for a new job newspaper. Mm. And I knew that I wasn't going to be a person that could be in an office. I thought about dental school Uh, after college. I thought about ortho school, but I just couldn't be confined. Um, and so I loved orthodontics and I loved what I did. Um, the doctor I worked for actually encouraged me. There was an ad in the paper for a company and I applied to it. Uh, it was owned by J and J at the time. They had over a thousand applicants. I was 26 years old and they picked me and I was like, I I thought they picked me because I had no sales experience. Um, I was up against guys, you know, with tons of experience, MBAs, you name it, but they hired me. And I asked them afterwards why. And they said, well, you said you'd love to travel. <laughs> My territory was huge, you know. Being oh. And so I worked for them 11 years. Um, I became the company trainer. Uh, I trained everybody on selling product knowledge. You know, Reliance wow. is a big part of that. Um, Ormco bought a company in 97, I believe. Uh, I stayed on for two more years. Then I got recruited uh, by my boss from a company, Joe Breland, to be on the founding team at Align. And I had the lead market. I worked with the marketing department in Austin. So I learned a ton, you know, while I was there working with some great minds like Zia Shisti and Kelsey uh, Worth. Um, From there, Uh, I got recruited to work for GAC for a couple years, and then I got recruited to go into an office of one of the biggest practices that I called on, and they wanted me to build the the formulary for them. Um, I ended up opening four offices with them. We got up to uh, eight offices, 12 doctors. I had the luxury of using QuickBooks because it was such a big company. It was a $27 million uh, group, and I... As I built the formulary, what I realized is the doctor was focusing on the big equipment because those were the purchases that he was making and everything else was being delegated. And as I ran through QuickBooks and was looking at everything, I saw that overpaying on items that seemed insignificant because we were so big that it was really costing the practice a lot. So you would see, so just to, just to clarify, so you would see these doctors would put all their focus and attention on, say, like the big, huge new laser or the x-ray while they were losing thousands on overpaying for gloves or other consumable products. Right. I mean, because orthodontists have a lot of chairs, a lot of mm-hmm. staff, see a lot of patients a day, and those little things that don't seem important really, really add up a lot. They do. I mean, I saved them on the big things we saved. I saved them a million dollars the first year. Wow. But over the next three years I was there, I mean, where we really focused and saved on was consumables. And so after I did that, 
I thought knowing all the doctors that I do, calling on people all over the country when I was with the line, having the connections that I did on the inside with sales and manufacturers and distributors and knowing who had good products and good service. And I knew margins, you know, from carrying a bag, I knew markup. Um, I knew who all the authorized dealers were. Um, we, we, we took the time and we started a consulting company analyzing 45 practices with my team, looking at all the things that I discovered at the practice where I was. And what we saw was the same patterns where doctors were focusing because, you know, they would place their orders on brackets and that was a big, you know, monthly purchase or a yearly nut. And they would look at the equipment and the other things were, you know, given to an ordering person that always had another duty. And this was something done on the side. A lot of times on the fly, they would do the best they could, but they didn't have number one, the negotiating power that we do. And, you know, they had the best systems in place and, and tried, but it was still, those things were falling through the cracks. Mm. And so once we spent the time analyzing those practices in May of 2015, I opened up the study club and the buying group. And we started out with 45 members and six companies on the list. And now uh, four years, four and a half years later, we have nearly 120 companies and almost 1800 orthodontists in the study club and buying group. Wow. Um, most of it has been member driven and, you know, we do go to the AO and I do speak. Um, we have a newsletter that goes out to our members each week. Uh, but really the biggest part of our growth has been from doctors telling their friends and some of the different Facebook groups, like when I started OrthoLiner 3D. Um, so let's break this down. So what, uh, what essentially you did is you went and saw, okay, there's this high need for people that get better pricing and consistent pricing on the consumables that they use inside their practice. It might not be the huge iTero scanner, um, but it's a lot of the consumables that happen inside their practice every single day. And even some of the, as we were talking on the, in the pre-interview, some big things like appliances that they don't think about. Right. That you were able to use your negotiation power and the group negotiation power to create this essentially list that allows people to have their own personal Costco, if you will. Right. Um, and they can pick and choose, you know, which companies on the list they want to use. They don't have to use all of them to save. Um, you know, like you said, the appliance deal, we have a friends and family deal with a company that is an authorized dealer. And so, you know, every startup needs appliances and they need televisions. Mm -hmm. um, and they can even buy the things that this company sells for their personal use. We had one doctor that just, just opened a new office and he posted in the study group that everything he bought and he bought all his appliances for his new house, except for one, he said it was three to $400 less than Best Buy. Wow. And wow. myself personally, three flat screen Samsung saved 1600. And so right. yeah. there's just so many places on the list, you know, ortho wise, um, even not all ortho wise. We have a couple of companies once you go into the portal and join that aren't even on our website because they're top secret. Nice. And so, um, you know, it's, it's been a real fun ride, you know, with my team. I don't lose people, you know, I pay them really well because they're so <laughs> good. And the thought, I, if I, I think if somebody called and left, I probably would have a heart attack. <laughs> well, here's the thing, like right now we're seeing, uh, I, I believe there's an evolution going on in uh, all the private practice industry, whether you're a chiropractor, whether you're a dentist or orthodontist, there's some, there's an evolution happening. With what you're doing now, you're actually using the power of the group and the power of the tribe to be able to, one, negotiate lower prices, but two, to really make huge differences. I know, as you said, in your first office, you're able to save them a million dollars in a year, but I know doctors that are seeing crazy savings through the list in their own private practices that they're doing the exact same stuff. They're buying the same things. They're just now getting a better price on it. Um, what has been the most satisfying thing for you as you're building this company and building these lists of what you've been able to accomplish? Well, I think not only just saving money for the practices, um, the companies that we add have to be authorized manufacturers, distributors, so they know it's service, safety, mm -hmm. quality. Quality. Um, yeah. You know, we have dedicated reps at the companies. They give us their best to help support the ordering people, you know, build their list. 
We have our portal where there's a lot of tools. We have examples of doctors that I've worked with that run like a 4% supply cost where the average orthodontist, the average according to Benson Clark and our research is 10.5 for an orthodontist. Wow. So I know we're making a big impact and we're helping them with their systems. You know, we talk about ordering cycles. We really promote quarterly. Um, and it's really simple. You know, if you have enough storage to stock your chairs, your on deck and your storage and have a system where you rotate it. You know, when we were analyzing practices, we went into some practices that weren't and we had to pull stuff off the shelf that wasn't, you know, ex that was expired because it wasn't being rotated and threw away, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars mm. of products. So, you know, we help them with their systems. You know, my trainers and I together have opened over 25 offices. Um, so we really know what we're doing. We focus just on orthodontics. That's all we know. That's why it's an ortho only group. And, um, you know, the, the companies that are on the list that we've selected are hand selected. You know, we talk to the doctors in the group and ask them who they want. You know, we turn away a lot. I mean, there's vultures circling overhead. A lot of companies sure. would like to be on the list and they all don't make the cut. And so we're really picky. Um, we're picky with the service that they provide. The doctors know they can reach out to me if they ever have a problem. Um, I've had a few I've had to take off, not many, but uh, most of the companies do a great job and the doctors are really happy and tell, tell their friends. Let's talk about that for a moment. You mentioned the, um, that you have your trainers who will go out and help them. How much education is involved in people really understanding um, how beneficial this type of situation could be even the Mary's list or even just really looking at the bottom line numbers of these consumables. So How the much question, education do you guys give? Oh, okay. Well we do training. How much education uh, do you give? Once they join, we do coaching calls and mm -hmm. when there's somebody in need, if they get a new ordering person in, we don't charge for an extra coaching call. Um, they know I'm really accessible. They can text me, email me, call me. Everybody's got my number. Same thing with my trainers. They have the portal with a lot of information to help support them. And then they also have the dedicated reps that will help them build their list and cross-reference it so they're not doing it all on their own. There's a lot of support that we give our members, you know, between that, the newsletter, and then the study club of doctors. I think there's about 1,200 that participate that are on Facebook, it's a secret Facebook group. And um, I mean, people are just awesome about sharing. I know some doctors that have opened new offices that have extended that they will offer a person with the startup advice on their own, just out of their own generosity and we all help each other. And so I think it's really evolved and grown into something that's just amazing. And our retention rate is huge. I, you know, I didn't, I didn't know what the retention rate was in the orthodontic industry. And I was talking to Paul Gange and he asked me what our retention rate was. And I told him it was above 95%. And he said, Mary, that is incredible. Yeah, that's amazing. He said, you know, you hang on to your clients and obviously mm. they're getting a lot of value. And, you know, we've, we've only raised the dues $200 since inception, you know, wow. and gone from six companies to nearly 120. And so the value, you know, is huge. And, and part of the reason I've kept it, kept it low is I don't have to spend a lot of money on marketing. Mm -hmm. You know, the AO is expensive. The meetings are expensive, you know, mm -hmm. going to those meetings and, um, you know, computers and just daily needs, you know, to run a business. So we, you know, obviously have expenses, but um, I don't have to spend a ton of money to try to get new members. We stay busy year round. So. Well, I'd like, to, I'd like to go into your journey for just a moment because um, you went, you became an entrepreneur. You were working for companies, you, you know, delved into all these, these uh, opportunities in the books and everything. But at one point you had to become an entrepreneur. And one of the biggest challenges with a lot of the doctors that you're seeing out there is thinking like an entrepreneur, right? Because they weren't taught this in school. How did you make that transition for yourself to become an entrepreneur? Well, you know, it's kind of funny. I just, I, I guess I came up with the idea because I saw a need mm. and I've always, I've always enjoyed shopping and saving. I'm a really thrifty person <laughs> and I like nice stuff. Look, I it came in 
come into fruition. That's great. I back. hate paying retail for anything. You know, I'm an eBay shopper and I've always shopped really hard, shop sales. I mean, when my girls were little, I'd buy their clothes, you know, a few sizes bigger the year before when everything was on sale for the next year. So they always yep. dress cute and I'd make their bows instead of buying them. And um, I, I just grew up that way. You know, my parents grew up in the depression. My mom was sure. peace and foil and they were always really thrifty. My dad, you know, had his own drug stores and he taught me how important service was. He would actually deliver his own prescriptions at the end of the day, he had free wow. delivery with the delivery boy. And then at the end of the day, if everything didn't get delivered, he would take things to people's homes and check on them. Wow. And as he opened more stores, he had three in his lifetime, you know, his customers followed him. He, mm -hmm. he had, you know, customers for life because he was so service oriented and um, that was kind of what I thought we needed to do when we built the company was really, really take care of everybody and look, you know, look out for the doctors and, and their needs. And, um, you know, the same thing with my team. It's just something that we all believe in. We, one thing that was a good piece of advice I got from Jackie Dorst early on, and that was if we're recommending companies for doctors to buy from, we can't take a piece. We can't take a percent of the sales on the backside. And my philosophy is we charge a fair membership. If we're recommending a product or a company to you, it's because we believe it's in your best interest, not because we're making money on, on that deal. And, you know, free groups, it's just a percent through the platform and it can really add up to a lot. And so we just, we pass all the rebates everything we negotiate goes straight to our members and they know it, you know, because we have doctors that have services that are in our group and products that they sell and they know we don't take a percent and, and everything we negotiate is for the members to keep. What's been your biggest challenge uh, in, in making this transition and as an entrepreneur and um, uh, yeah, basically I just wonder what the biggest challenge has been for you. Has it been the negotiation? Has it been the letting the word out, the marketing? What has it been? Well, I think in the beginning, that was the hardest part because I didn't have a ton of doctors. Mm. Um, I realized that the networks of doctors telling each other was big mm. and, you know, by having doctors that were in small study clubs telling their friends, you know, kind of made it grow kind of organically. And so, you know, all the things that I got invited to speak at, you know, that kind of started it off in the beginning, but the beginning was the hardest part because just like with the doctor starting their practice, you know, if you're starting from zero, the beginning is hard, but once yeah. you get the momentum, you know, what I found now is it just keeps going. And, you know, every year we've grown, there was years I grew 30%, you know, as we've gotten bigger, I think this last year we grew 10, um, 10%. And, you know, I know that the, the orthodontic industry, if the companies grow 3%, a lot of the big ones say that's good. Right. And, and they have price increases. So some of them aren't really even growing. Right. And it's just tough. You know, there's a lot more pieces of the pie. There's a lot more companies. It's really competitive. Um, you know, there it's, I think it's gotten difficult in that respect. And then I think orthodontists, um, you know, really have to engage the patients now because of the do it yourself aligner companies. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't really think those patients are patients that would go to an orthodontist really anyway. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how much that's affecting the private practice doctors, but it's definitely out there. Sure. And, you know, in, in some ways I see it growing the industry because there's more awareness. Mm -hmm. And as, you know, word is getting out from a lot of the patients that aren't happy, you yeah. know, these people are realizing that, yeah, I really do need to go to an orthodontist and it's really important, you know, so you straighten a few teeth. So you can really relate with those orthodontists about how, you know, the starting of a practice or starting of a new business and how it goes. And so um, I think it gives you a lot of that credibility, especially, um, and, and even more so, I should say, with the fact that what you're getting for them, the discounts you're, you're able to provide, the companies that are coming on board with you, uh, they're quality companies. And I think that well, first of all, let's talk about some of that. Let's talk about some of the companies that are on the list 
that you have been able to negotiate. And I would love to hear a tough negotiation story. One, something that you really worked hard on that I was like, oh man, but I was so happy that you got it at the end because you were able to get them as part of your, uh, the list. Oh gosh. Um, quite a few of them have been tough. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> There's one that I can't mention, but uh -huh. um, it, it's in the portal. Once you get there, that was a tough one. But I think that some of the harder ones were probably some of the big companies. Mm. Um, was it I hard know, because they didn't trust or didn't see the value or what was the what was so hard about they it? They didn't, they didn't realize how much new business they would get. Uh, we had to give them examples because they were in the orthodontic arena. So they didn't understand that by signing up, you know, it could be millions of dollars in new revenue for them. And some uh, of those I think were a little bit harder than some of the ortho ones. I think the ortho ones, we have a lot of companies coming to us because they know now who we are and they want to be on the list because they know that they can grow with us. Um, but I think that getting them wasn't the hardest part. The hardest part was getting them to give me what I wanted. Mm. You know, what I felt was a good discount and was fair. And that sometimes there was a lot of back and forth because I pushed really hard. And you're uh, like, so you had a lot of negotiation with them. Right. Some, yeah, some, because, you know, some of the ones that have, you know, millions of products, Sure. They would send me a list and I would get like the top hundred and I go, no, that's not good enough. Ah. You know? and, and then, you know, I'd have some that want to do like a discount, even though they have ongoing revenue that they're getting, they wanted to do a discount for a short window of time. And then that doesn't keep the doctors engaged. And so I'd come back and go, well, no, you know, we need to have an ongoing discount, not ah. just in the beginning. You know, some of them are just because they're a service. And so it is in the beginning. And I understand that. But right. most of the companies, we have ongoing discounts, you know, as long as doctors stay members. So. Wow, that's awesome. So uh, yeah, I, was, uh, I still want to ask you, what's your proud? Is there one that you can name that you're proudest of? That you're like, ah, oh, I was so glad I did that. It was so tough. And I'm just so happy. Maybe it was even just a personal victory. Not that it was the biggest discount, but that it was just like, yeah, I really wanted it. And I had to work hard for it. And I got it. Um, one that was really tough. Let's see. Ormco or that you're hard. just proud of. Ormco, Ormco was hard. Ormco was hard. Getting them was amazing. And, um, you know, they're a wonderful company. I had some connections, of course, because I worked there. Sure. But uh, that one was, I was really proud of that one. That's awesome. Very cool. All right. So let's talk a little bit about um, how you decided in, 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 or how you decide who you're going to allow into it because there, there's a broad spectrum of types of companies that are on the list, right? It's not just, just the consumables that we were talking about earlier, but you have consultants on the list, don't you? You have other yes. types of programs on the list as well. Right. We have services, we have consultants, we have software, we have reminder systems, we have office supplies, equipment, you know, like I said, appliances, televisions. We even have, you know, tempur beds and Weber grills and things you wouldn't need. Oh my gosh. Get because of that company, um, you know. And so it's I, really like a catalog. Like this is <laughs> like a, the old JCPenney catalog. <laughs> no, not JCPenney. <laughs> Are they still even in business? But, remember getting those when you were a kid and you're like that big old chunk at Christmas time right. and be like, yeah. oh. I remember yeah, that so. Sears catalog. Yeah, uh, there you go, Sears, that's what it was. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I didn't even name the company. Tito Norris named it. I couldn't think of a name. And it's a kind of embarrassing my name is on it. Oh, you know, come on. quite honestly, but it is. And um, it's funny though, you know, the, the list, you know, he said, you just need to call it Mary's list because it's your list of companies that you've hand selected mm -hmm. for these doctors. Yeah. And so, you know, we kind of went with that and got the, the DBA for it, um, you know, after we got the company going. And um, it's just, it's been really a lot of fun. You know, I tell people mm -hmm. I have the best job in the world. I get paid to shop. Yeah, and, right. You no, know, it's like a woman's dream. And and then, you know, to be able to save money, that's a big thing for me. And so, um, you know, I think the doctors that are our members every day, I get doctors that tell me how much they appreciate what we're doing. And it's just really rewarding to hear that. Um, I love hearing it from female doctors too, because they're like, man, you know, you created this company and you're a female entrepreneur and 
Yeah. You know, just really should be so proud of what you built and it, you absolutely know, you should be it's it's it really is, remarkable I, i've been really blessed i mean i just uh, we love our doctors i love my team it's a lot of fun um, before i go on to uh the questions that i want to get because i i love the fact that you also have a different perspective and this is where i want to uh get into your brain you know i can i would i try to put myself into the place of the listener and I'm hearing this list and I'm hearing, okay, I'm going to say the discounts and I'll actually, I don't have to work too hard because I've actually had this conversation with people before when I, as I mentioned, I've, I, to the, all the listeners out there, I've known Mary since 2012 when she was first getting started and uh, I was connected with her through Scott Law and, um, you know, I'll tell doctors about this and, and they have this kind of skepticism like, oh yeah, yeah, sure. How do you, what, what have you been able to do to maybe overcome that when you tell doctors, hey, look, I can help you save X amount or this amount or just so you know, and like you said, it's referral based. So that makes it very positive because there's other doctors doing that work for you. But I'm assuming there's every once in a while where you have that skeptic coming along. Maybe it's even the skeptic company that they, you have to just point out a few things to show them um, that you're legit. And that it's going to save them more money in the long run and even the short run on a lot of cases. How do you do that? What, it, what are some of your talking points, if you will? Well, I think early on it was harder, you know, because I only had a handful of companies. And now if I'm negotiating and talking to a company, they can see on my website what we built. Yeah. Um, with doctors, I still have doctors that are skeptical, you know, that are worried they're going to save their membership. And I'm like, you know, you spend that at Starbucks <laughs> bucks a month, you know, yeah. come on, coffee, a couple of lunches, yep. you know, and I look at it as, you know, doctors invest and I've invested in things hoping to have a return. I don't always, mm -hmm. you know, I have some where I've lost money and mm -hmm. stuck with it, mm -hmm. you know, and to me, this is really a no brainer because it's so easy to save the membership and so much more knowing what I know, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'll, I'll have them, you know, look at what they're paying, maybe give them a, a price on a couple of things that we know they go through a lot of to give them peace of mind before they join. Um, and then talk to them about all the companies that we have and all the opportunity. And, you know, the, I think the number one thing I do is I tell them, talk to your friends, go to our website, look at the testimonials and, and, for the most part, we get the doctor's contact page saying, I'm ready to join. And they just want to get started. But I still call them because I want to talk to every single member before they do and mm -hmm. walk them through what to expect and what we offer. And, um, you know, there was times early on where I wasn't able to do that. I was wearing a lot of hats. And I mm -hmm. found that I really need to talk to everybody before they join. So they understand how accessible we are, what we have to offer you know, that we're there to support them ongoing, that um, we continue to add good companies. We've kept the membership, you know, the same for years, even though we've added a lot more services and a lot more support with the portal and the weekly newsletter. And that, you know, we're constantly doing that. You know, we, they know that we look at every company, continue to follow up on what they're doing. So there's no surprises. You know, and we, we make their ordering people's life easier because yeah. we, we do a lot of that and they don't have to spend time, like doctors have said, going through, you know, books of catalogs. So we're, well, we're yeah, I think, I think that's really great, right? It's, it's the same thing that doctors have to do, right? Is the, well, talk to your friends. Like it's the referral based process of it. The, the product speaks for itself. And I think that's, that's very, very valuable. Well, cool. Well, we've come to a place in our show, Mary, where I ask a series of questions. They're kind of rapid fire, but I'd love just to get your perspective on uh, these questions, not only as a business owner, but also as someone who is seeing what's going on in these practices from the sidelines, because that's one of the, I think, most valuable areas that you can be as a consultant, as someone who is trying to obviously do good by their uh, their. Uh, customers and their clients out there. So uh, are you willing to play? Sure. All right. So what do you see as one of the most expensive things private practice owners are missing in their practice? Um, 
couple of things actually. I, well, consumables, we talked about that. Uh -huh. Overpaying on the little things, not realizing how much that adds up to. Sure. Uh, and I tell doctors every day, you know, if you save um, 20,000 a year, 50,000 a year, and that goes into a 401k at 5%, by the time you retire, you're gonna have millions. Oh, that's a really smart way to put it to them. Yeah, and, and it does, it adds up so fast. I see it every single day. and. You know, there are doctors, like you said, that I think are skeptical that think they can do it on their own and that they don't need to pay for it. But for the most part, because of our retention, I feel real confident that we're, we're doing it. And, um, and then the other thing I think is, um, and one of the hardest things, even for myself, is knowing your team and mm. knowing your patients and knowing what drives them and what makes them tick so that you retain your employees and then you continue to grow your practice, you know, by getting so those missionary referrals out there. I wanted to ask you, uh, before I go on the next question, you had mentioned in our pre-interview, you were talking about the QR codes and stuff like that for, for doctors. Can you give us a little bit of insight on that and what your, what the QR code example was that you had? Oh, sure. Okay. So, there's companies out there that doctors will pay to gain reviews with say Facebook or Instagram or different social media platforms that have a monthly. And in talking to our members, I know that a lot of them get frustrated with all the recurring monthly charges. And some of those companies are quite expensive and I was actually approached by a couple of them. And then I talked to a company by the name of Dental Innovations and what they did is they created a, a custom QR code for the doctors. And it's just one of the many things they do. They're, built, they're building a library of training. And that's really what this company is about. But they had this QR code. And so they wanted to introduce it and, and have it for my members and make seven stands up for their office. One of the things they wanted was a recurring charge. And I was like, no, no, do it. You know, doctors that are really savvy can do this on their own. It's mm. not that hard, you know, but, but your benefit is you build these nice stands. And to me, that's worth a one-time charge. And here's what I think you should charge for it. And so they agreed with me and we did it. And it's been a huge success to the doctors wow. that bought it. I had one doctor that told me that, and, and we teach them on how to use it you know, reward your staff so that they get that review the day the braces come off and they're excited or the day their aligners are, are done and they have beautiful teeth. Ask for it that day. You're going to get a ton of five-star reviews because it's the moment of excitement. Sure. And reward your staff, something small for getting that referral, you know, up on Facebook or, you know, right. just because then they'll buy into it. And the same thing, you know, we carry to the ordering people. If they save you 10,000 a year for something, give them a reward, mm -hmm. you know, let them understand that, you know, you appreciate that. And then there's more in the kitty, maybe for raises or for other things. Sure. In the office. So back to the QR code though, this one doctor said that she'd gotten 200 new patients in one month. Wow. By doing this. And it's literally a few hundred dollars for the stands. And wow. you know, she rewarded this one girl. This one girl made a ton by really sure. Pushing. And the, the beauty of that, and I told them is it's not going to cost you anything extra if it doesn't work. That's amazing. Yeah, that is that is one of those nice things where it's like, hey, one time shot, see if it works, try it out 50 different ways. Your ROI is going to be great no matter what. So that's great. Okay. And because of that, you know, we've had a lot of doctors. I'm trying to move out of the sun here in my office. We've had a lot of doctors, you know, because they've heard what other doctors have achieved with this that sure. told me, okay, how do I get a hold of these people? Yeah, so. no, of course it makes sense. Um, okay. So what is a book that you believe every private practice owner should read? Um, there's a couple that come to mind. One of them is called Peak, and um, it was actually recommended to me by my son-in-law, Andy Erdman, because Andy is a genius about opening up restaurants that just are off the charts. Mm -hmm. um, in Austin and DC, he's opened up restaurants that have gotten James Beard Awards, that have been in Bon Appetit Restaurant of the Year. Um, I mean, and he's just got a knack for building a team. And that's what this book is about. And it's about understanding your, your employees and taking care of them. 
and, and providing a great service and having them buy into the actual company, not just look at it as a paycheck. And so that's one book I think that is, it's an amazing book, you know, that I think every doctor should read. And then the other one, and this is one that I use at my company a lot. It's the five languages of love Mm -hmm. and, you know, rewarding your team and then, you know, doing things for your patients that they appreciate. And kind of a funny little story is Corey that works with me and he's been with me since the very beginning. He was one of the the people in the very beginning that helped with the analysis. We opened four offices together. Um, He was due for a raise and I knew his love language. I knew what his number one thing was. And so I called him one afternoon and I said, Corey, I said, I just want you to know how much I appreciate you, how awesome you are to have you on the team. Keep us all laughing. You're a joy to be around. You've got such a positive outlook on life and a great attitude and you care about the doctors. And, you know, we just, I I want you to know how much we appreciate you. And he was just, just giddy. Giddy. Yeah. It's so excited. Thank you. Thank you. Making his day. And, you know, uh, based off of what we just talked about, Corey, I understand that gifts to you are zero, you know, (laughs) that you like affirmation and you want to hear that you're appreciated. So I was about to give you a raise, but instead I just decided to call and tell you how great you were. It was so sweet. like, Oh, but Mary, I love my job. I get to work from home. I get to be with my dog. I'm here when my son comes home. Y'all are like my family. I would never leave. This is like the best job on earth. And oh, I don't that's so funny. Home. And I was like, Corey, I'm pulling your chain. You're going to get away. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. But, um, you know, it's it, it, knowing what drives mm-hmm. the people on your team to really make them happy. Yep. And, you know, he calls me, which I think is the greatest compliment in the world, if he just needs to talk to somebody. Mm. You know, if there's something going on with his kids or, you know, just a personal issue. And, you know, I thought about it and, and not really even thinking about the fact that that's what a great leader is. You know, yeah. it's organic. And, and, you know, it's like Joe Breland. You know, Joe Breland, and I don't know if you know Joe, mm-hmm. but he was my boss at A Company, and then he took me to be on the founding team with him at Align in the very, mm-hmm. very beginning. And Joe has a following that is so incredible that any company he goes to start, he immediately has 60 people in line wanting to work for him. And, and it's because he really cares, and you know he cares about you when you work with him. And it's fun. I mean, when you work with someone like that, that, you know, it's coming from their heart and you know they have your back and that they, they look out for you, they truly do. You know, it's, it, it's not really even a job then. You yeah. Know, I would That's go work awesome. with in Austin and, you know, we would have more fun laughing, you know, when we worked mm. together and just enjoying what we did and the companies that we've built. Um, I mean, and, and he's somebody that I think that really I've learned a lot from. I mean, he's just a great mentor. Well, it just goes to show when you get to, when you invest in the people that are working with you and you invest in finding out what really makes them tick, what makes them happy, what is their love language, that it's going to return to you uh, 10 times fold, easy, over and over and over again. Before I go into the last couple of questions, um, how can listeners reach out to you? How come people reach out? Oh, oh, yeah. Um, if they, if they want to join, if they just go to maryslist.com to the website, there's a link to click on that says join now if they want to join. Um, if they have questions, they can just email me, Mary with an I at maryslist.com. And I check my email 24 seven, it seems like. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you said that with the I because it's M A R I S list, right? Dot com. Right. Mary at maryslist.com. Yeah. Well. Yep. Awesome. All right. Uh, Mary, what is the best advice you've ever received in life or in business? The best advice. Mm-hmm. I know it's a tough question. In life or business, probably from my dad. Mm. Um, from when I worked in his drugstores as a little girl, mm. and just watching how he conducted his business and how much he cared about his customers and how honest he was. He, you know, was such a giving man that many times if people were older or, you know, elderly and, and they didn't have 
insurance or the money for a prescription and it was really they needed it I mean, he, he gave away, my mom always said he gave away more than he sold because <laughs> he just was a really giving person and a really honest person and just real dedicated. I mean, he worked six days a week, you know, his entire life. Um, he worked evenings, you know, he stayed open for people if they needed to come get a prescription and, you know, after work, he was going to work late, you know, to stay for them. I mean, he just, what he a great example. Off. Yeah, I mean, he just was an honest, good, hardworking, caring. I mean, he was so smart. He had a master's in microbiology. He was a pharmacist. He was a registered nurse in the Navy. And he honestly knew more about medicine than most doctors that sent prescriptions. Wow. To him. And, you know, I can remember as a little girl him saying, you know, you can't put the patient on that if they're on this. There's contraindications, you know. And he just knew it. This. And, I mean, he just was, he was an incredible man. I learned a lot from him. Wow, what a great example for you. And obviously a reason why your business has grown the way it is. So much so that I'm gonna actually answer the last question for you, which is, well, I always ask, what's the best resource or tool that every private practice owner should be using to grow their practice? And I have said this to many a doctor, I will say this here on the air. Uh, it is total self-serving, but it's true. It is Mary's List. Uh, from the very beginning, when I heard about the idea from Scott, who I said before I introduced me to you, I was like, that just makes sense. Like, how come nobody has done this in this way before? And you've gone with it. You've ran with it. You've done amazing things to just help out. I hear all the time and every single consultant out there will tell you they've heard all the time. Oh, I got to get my overhead down. I got to get my overhead down. It's like, okay, here's a resource for you right in front of you. Go use it. And so Mary's list is the resource that I'm going to suggest everybody go out and, and check out. So Mary, right. thank you so much for being a part of the show today. Well, thank you. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Good. I did too. You're a, you're a joy to talk to and to uh, work with. And I'm just so grateful that we were able to get you on the show. Uh, everybody listening, please remember, uh, go check out the show notes, all the links to the books that Mary recommended. Also her website and her contact information will be on the show notes as well. Don't forget to tune in every week to our podcast to find out more and to learn more from our experts. But today, Mary, I can't thank you again for being a member of our podcast and be here as a guest on our show. Thanks, Dino. Sorry about the, the background. <laughs> Your little doggies are loving you. That's Did you all hear it? Just, I hear them just barking right now. Just oh, God, what they're they trying to do. <laughs> it's all right. They're perfectly I'm fine. Control them. <laughs> oh, they're totally fine. Well, everybody else out there in podcast land, thank you very much for tuning in for the Propreneur Podcast. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please make sure you do so. And remember that our goal here is to always help you be more proactive, productive, and profitable in all the areas of your life and business. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you on the next show. Thanks, Tino. Thanks so much again for listening to the Propreneur Podcast. We really appreciate your support. If you haven't subscribed already, please make sure you do so. Also, if you feel like you might be a good fit for our podcast as a guest or know somebody who you think would be, go ahead and email us at dino at dinowatt.com. Again, thanks for your support. We'll see you on the next episode.